Hello, my name is Mike and I'm calling for Abby. I'm sorry about that. We're calling a publicly available list of voters. I'd still love to talk to you about the upcoming U.S. Senate election. Beto O'Rourke? Yes, he's a Democrat. Okay, no problem. Are you voting for Ted Cruz? Hi, is this Matthew? Calling a publicly available list of voters and there's a lot of incorrect phone numbers. Yeah. My name is Mike and I'm calling for Laura. I'm calling for Mirela. I'm calling for Sulema. Ivan. Samantha. John. No está bien. Estoy buscando a Jesús. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Wrong number. I say why I'm supporting it. I'm like, yes, they're actually listening. They might give me an answer. Hello, my name's Mike and I'm calling for Gerald. We're calling Texas voters to talk about this year's US Senate race and talk to them about Beto. Beto. So close. Home is in just place. Most Texans have never even been to El Paso. It's so far west, it's in a different time zone. It's like the city that's out at the end of the road once you've driven all day across West Texas. We look very much like any other American city. It has a very deep connection to our sister city, Ciudad Juarez, right across the border. El Paso and Mexico are one region. We share culture, we share language, we share history, we share air, we share water. We really are very much a united region. Beto promoted El Paso in a way that was worthy of who we are. He promoted the border in a way that restored our dignity, dignity that others had tried to strip away. He talked about immigrant communities in a way that celebrated what they do for the country. We should be leading the way in rewriting our immigration laws in our own image to reflect who we are, the advantage and the quality of life that we enjoy here in El Paso, Texas, one of, if not the safest cities in the United States of America. I can't think of any important Texas politician ever from El Paso. Somebody from El Paso is at an automatic disadvantage in building identity across the state. It's so far removed from most of the voters in Texas. Beto for Texas, uh, Beto O'Rourke is running for... We are running just a huge grassroots operation. <laughs> Someone's dog is here. Like, we're a dog-friendly headquarters campaign for a U.S. Senate race. This is, uh, Beto O'Rourke is running against Ted Cruz. We can't keep up with the mail, literally, right now. We can't keep up with the money coming in. We're going to keep up with the money coming in, but it's really hard. Everyone here in this city has felt the effects of Beto being our congressman. And I think people are getting nervous. They so much care about him winning, and they want to come in and help. I had to pour water on the ground. Kind of work, yeah, that's what I did even with mine. I was nailing mine to the trees because it was so hard to get it in the ground. And this is rock, so... Okay. I'm 71 years old. I'm a volunteer for Beto O'Rourke in El Paso, Texas. I've been doing this for a year. I started out, everybody thought I was crazy. November 6th. Uh, oh no, I won't forget that. Good. I will crawl there if I have to. And now they're all starting to think, yeah, maybe this might happen. We got a good one. The first one we got was good. One of the young people from Austin emailed me and said, hey, would you do a grassroots office? And I said, sure, what do I do? <laughs> I've never done this before in my whole life. I handed out everybody a canvassing script. This is the hard work that the Cruz campaign is not willing to do. All right, are we ready? 
And it is Beto, not Beto. <laughs> okay. We're going to take Rebecca and Eddie in our car. Poop. Okay. Okay, what does that say? Error loading. There we go. Okay. If we can get enough people to vote, which is a problem, I think we can turn this election into a win for Beto. That's why we're knocking on doors, because we want people to know who he is. You guys back there? Okay. Hopefully somebody's home. <laughs> Don't despair. He said, go that way. <laughs> we're actually talking to registered voters who participate. Well, can we just walk this way? I think we're going to go to the next house. Houston has more voters than anywhere else in the state. Harris County is the biggest county. It's a swing county at this point. Well, I'm extremely proud that Senator Ted Cruz went here. It's always been important to him to have a Christian education, and he's gone on to use his moral values in his job. Ted obviously had a bent toward debate and politics. I don't know if you've seen that. I, I have not. Oh, look at that. That is hysterical. You recognize some of those folks? <laughs> It's a fun time. I do believe him to be a man of integrity. I've seen that through his life, uh, and I know the father that raised him. And I think there's a, a deep understanding of who they are and what their purpose is. We need all of us as Americans, as leaders, and especially the church to step forward and lead to help bring our communities back together and knit them back together. I was really surprised the last numbers that I saw broken down by region, Cruz did not have as big an advantage in Houston as I expected. Cruz will try to establish a beachhead in Houston and make that his stronghold. He's gonna to continue to remind everybody that he was there during Harvey. He's gonna to try to win back some of those voters. Port Arthur, Texas is inundated as Harvey made landfall and lingered overnight. Search and rescue operations were suspended at nightfall because the conditions were simply too dangerous. I don't think there's a community in the whole state of Texas that, that has seen such incredible devastation the way Port Arthur has. It's a year later and you ride through Port Arthur, you look at Port Arthur, where the hill went. Ready? Hey! <laughs> Son of the Cruz did tell the community in the whole that he was going to make sure that Port Arthur got help from the government. Come on, ready? The senator told my neighbor personally that he was going to have her help. He was, she was going to get help. Twice in two weeks, Senator Ted Cruz has visited Port Arthur. We, do, we need some action. Let's talk some action. And heard the pleas for help. It kind of felt like he was sincere about helping, and not just helping a few, but helping everybody, because he wants everybody to be helped. I don't feel like the federal government, not Ted Cruz, kept his word. This is a hot water heater. Harvey did this to it. And took it apart and all that kind of stuff. I've been trying to get it to get fixed, but it hadn't got fixed yet. FEMA did not help me. They sent me some type of recording saying that they were giving out the $500, but that I could not get the $500 because they could never reach me. I was not here because I was displaced. I wasn't here. Oh, okay, let me have your um, junior bacon cheeseburger. I take three buses to come to Wendy's three to time, two or three times a week because my kitchen is messed up from Harvey. Yeah, that's why. Ted Cruz should have been a better person to keep his word. It's myself and a lot of us that are still trying to get help. And that hurts. Hurts. Real bad, okay? Try not to shit no tears. It hurts, and it does. 
So look out for the election. I don't think we're gonna vote for you. Really don't. Okay. Senator, I, I have one quick question yeah. for you. Yeah. I spent some time with people in Port Arthur who you actually visited mm -hmm. with last year. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of them are still struggling and would like to hear from you about, you know, all the promises that you made when they're going to be fulfilled or sort of just what is your response to that? Well, Hurricane Harvey hit over a year ago and it hit this state powerfully. Uh, it was the, the second most costly natural disaster in U.S. history. The communities that were ravaged all the way from Corpus to Louisiana, I have visited those communities over and over and over again. Working to get the federal relief that is needed, working to get when the storm was hitting, the disaster and first responders and, and, and the assets in a position to save people's lives. I do not trust Half of the politicians of our United States government, our state government, and some of the county government, when they say things, they only say it to get votes. Both Senator Ted Cruz and Congressman Beto O'Rourke were in Houston today speaking to the masses and trying to gather support for the race for the Senate. This is a turnout election. That means it's our job. It's our job to keep Texas red. But the danger is too many of us might stay home. You don't want to wake up on the 7th wondering what more you could have done. Vote. Vote and bring your friends, your family, your neighbors. Bring everyone out. I know I'm not comfortable with voting for none of them. On their side, the Democrats are the Republicans.